The following is an exclusive presentation of the Yes Network. Sports have the power to transform lives. I know because they transformed mine. My name is Brandon Steiner. As a kid growing up in Brooklyn, I used to dream about making it big as a professional athlete. Years later, I would create a sports collectibles and marketing empire based solely on the love of the game. I've done business with or met just about every sports icon around, and I've enjoyed the spoils of success. But now, I'm paying it forward with the help of some champions I've met along the way. Join me as I explore the remarkable humanitarian power of sports on The Hookup. On today's show, we meet a young man who teaches us truly what it means to have a heart. I had gone 10 years of having a horribly sick heart, and it kind of was just what I was used to. His life was saved. He didn't die. I still have him. So I have to let him fulfill his dream. We hook up some longtime Yankees fan. It's just bringing everyone closer. And we sit down with the legendary Goose Gossage to discuss his memories of the game. All I wanted to do is put a big league uniform on that one time, and that one time turned into 22 years. Hi, I'm Brandon Steiner, CEO and founder of Steiner Sports Marketing. Our show is a very simple one. It's a hookup. We try to find someone or a situation that's in need, and we try to hook them up with either a surprise visit from a Yankee player or a great celebrity. We try to decorate their sports room or surprise them with a combination of both. I've got to tell you about a recent project we did at the Hebrew home in the Bronx. This project really hit home for me because, well, first of all, it's right near Yankee Stadium. It's right near my offices, and there's over 800 seniors in this facility. And I just immediately said to myself, how do I make the nights where the Yankee games are playing, how do I make that more fun? How do I make it more comfortable for seniors? How do I make it more comfortable so that grandchildren want to go visit their grandparents? I'm here with David Pomerantz, Executive VP at the Hebrew Home here in Riverdale. And really the brain behind all this and said, let's put an exhibit of some of the coolest Yankee memorabilia. I remember you stopping by my office, we, we were kind of talking about putting something like this together. What went through your head, uh, how this idea come about, and what's been the reaction? Well, let me start by saying I'm a lifelong baseball fan. It's always been a part, a part of my life and my family's life. And when I came to see you that day, I was actually a little nervous. So I said, here I am going to see somebody who could really do something quite special for us. And I think I was 30 seconds into my speech, and you said, you don't have to say anything else. It'd be my pleasure. I'll work with you. You can take stuff from my collection, stuff that we have, and I'm going to help you build something really spectacular. Yeah. We did that within a couple of months, thanks to you and the response has been amazing. What we're seeing here is people coming in and it's bringing back memories and happy parts of their lives, which really make them feel good. They're sharing it with their families. Got great discussions, Rizzuto versus Jeter, and all kinds of fun dialogue that goes on. And we're also seeing something very interesting, Brandon. We're seeing people who have memory impairment, who have a hard time remembering things in their lives. They're able to remember things about baseball. So while they have a hard time sometimes realizing even what day it is at times, they certainly remember DiMaggio's hitting streak and Chris Chambliss home run off of Mark Littell. So we see a lot of uh, important work to be done here in terms of what sports and baseball particularly can do to help people uh, to remember good things in their lives. I'm here with Bill Beck, one of the residents of the Hebrew home. Uh, I assume a big Yankee fan. <laughs> All my life. Now, um, what do you think of this exhibit? I think it's wonderful. I really do. It brings back a lot of memories. Now, do you have a favorite Yankee or a favorite? Well, Yankee Joe team? D used to be one of my favorites, and especially when he married Marilyn Monroe. You like that package? <laughs> I don't know how he did it, but <laughs> he did very well. The first time you walked in this exhibit and saw all this Yankee memorabilia, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. What popped in your mind? I couldn't believe uh, the, the display. I really couldn't believe it. And I, I called my family, and uh, they've seen it too. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. That's all I could say. I'm here with one of the residents, Al. You got Bob Shepard in the background. I mean, you're feeling like you're almost at Yankee Stadium. How is this uh, exhibit 
uh, affected some of the seniors and some of the people here at the home? It's uh, brought a lot of people even closer. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I've heard stories from the older gentlemen that remember Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, things like that. Uh, and it's just incredible. I mean, people that really don't understand baseball or asking questions, it's just bringing everyone closer. I noticed you were sitting in the Yankee seat earlier before. What, what's it like being here? What, what's, this, what's the overall feeling in this home? Uh, it brings back memories, a lot of memories, and mostly really good memories for a lot of people. Uh, for me, it brings back memories of my childhood. My first Yankee game, I was 10. Uh, it just brings, it's, it's, it's like I'm there all over again with, with this. This is just fantastic. And now we have a really amazing story about the power of the human heart. Kobe Salerno is a young man that really got hit with something at a really young age that most of us never want to get hit with, and that is finding out that your heart isn't going to work properly and you need a heart transplant. His is a compelling story of bravery. A boy diagnosed with a rare heart disease at the age of 12 undergoes life-threatening surgery at 22 years old, and it's just the beginning of his adventure. My son is magnificent. <laughs> he's my only son. Um, he's been sick his whole life. We didn't know he was sick until he was 12. Um, my husband and him are sports addicts. So um, he played a lot of soccer. He um, had a hard time breathing. And he used to tell us that his legs were weak and he couldn't catch up with his friends. And so they told us he had exercise-induced asthma. He was such a good athlete when he was younger. And this thing just kind of crept up. It got to the point where I, I could see something wrong. It wasn't like he used to be. We found out later on, a few years later, that the only way to save Colby was to have a new heart, and he needed a heart transplant. When the doctor gave us the verdict, Kelly and I were both crying, and I remember this like it was yesterday. We were walking out to the parking lot, Colby's between us, and he has his arms around both of us, and he said, it's not worth dying over, you know, because we were just so sad for him not being able to play anymore when they told him that, and he put it all in perspective. I was in a state of shock. I was scared out of my mind, and they admitted him, and he was in there for 180 days. Too sick to leave the hospital, Kobe spent six months waiting for a heart. I had gone 10 years of having a horribly sick heart, and it kind of was just what I was used to. Um, at that point, though, I was aware that I needed a new heart, so obviously I was more afraid than I would have been, but knowing that I was in heart failure and stuff, you know, it was much scarier realizing that I couldn't even walk on level streets, you know, let alone hills and staircases and stuff without struggling to breathe. It was so grueling and so hard. I have to say in 180 days, he only had one bad day. I probably had a bad day every day. He had one bad day. You know, I've heard stories, I read stories about people dying, waiting. And it's, you know, I, I know Kel never lost faith, and I, I never lost faith, but I, I just worried. I, I just didn't want to be, you know, in that situation. Colby isn't your typical patient. I mean, a lot of the patients, they just stayed in their room and they were very down. He never did that. There was a sign on his room that said, the party's here. And he was the youngest on the floor in intensive care. He, he just seemed to say, if I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna make the best of it. We were driving home after visiting him that night and on the highway, they called and it was, Kel's phone had said, it was Colby and it's like, why would Colby be calling now? We just saw him. And then the light bulb went off and they, he said they got a heart and we turned around and went running back to the hospital and the doctor said, go home and get some rest because it's not going to happen probably till the next day or whatever, but things are looking really good. And uh, it, was, it was really funny. We were all nervous and, and worried and we walked into his room and he was as calm and as 
positive as anybody could be. And, and right then and there, I knew he'll be all right. He'll get through this. The recovery was much better than the wait. Um, I was ready to be out of the hospital in 10 days. Took an extra four just to make sure. So I left the hospital in 14 days, even though I had just stayed in it for 180. And then I went home, started walking. Uh, my whole life, I wasn't able to run long distances, but now I can run 5Ks. I started skiing for the first time. You know, just everything that I thought was completely gone from my life was now I was given a second chance to try all these new things. He has a dream to fulfill. His life was saved. He didn't die. I still have him. So I have to let him fulfill his dream. And his dream is to be a doctor. The idea is to help kids who have been in my situation. And when you go in, you meet a doctor, you know, they try and tell you that things are gonna be okay and you can't help but doubt them and be like, how do you really know you've never been where I have been? Well, that's what I hope to change. I hope to, you know, be able to look kids in the eye. I really wanna work with young children and stuff who like, cause when I was 12, I remember it being so hard. You didn't really understand everything, but I'm gonna be their doctor now who can explain to them, I've been where you have been. I made it through and we're gonna, you know, work on this together to make sure you get through it as well. I can't wait for the day when he puts that coat on and it says MD. It's just going to be worth everything we went through. Kobe's dream of becoming a doctor is an admirable one, and he just started attending Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. But it won't be easy. Kobe's medications make him vulnerable to viruses and bacteria, and of course, medical school is not cheap, and Kobe's looking at a mountain of medical care debt. So in order to help him, I recruited Hall of Fame pitcher, Goose Gossage. With Kobe's mother's help, we brought him and his family to NYY Steak in New York City, my favorite restaurant, in order to surprise Kobe with my newest hookup. As soon as they were done eating, we went right into action. Hello, how are you? Hi. Brandon Steiner, how are you? How are you, sir? What's up, Goose? Colby, how you doing, buddy? Goose Gossage. How's it going, pal? How's everything? Yeah. It's my pleasure, buddy. Nice to meet you. We've uh, heard a lot about your story, and uh, I'm just so impressed with what you've had to go through and Thank endure, you. and uh, so great Yankee fan, and Huge Yankee got your fan. pinstripes on, I yeah. think. We wanted to help you out. We know that you I got chills, there. man. You have chills. I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to so congratulate you. We wanted to help you out, so we're doing a couple things. Mm -hmm. Goose and I figured we'd get together. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing we do is we're gonna give you $10,000. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing an auction on your behalf. What I love is the work you've done there, make, um, you know, make awareness for people to donate their organs. And it's just tremendous what you've done. Your commitment to go back into medicine and help others. So we're gonna be doing an auction with all kinds of memorabilia. And uh, we got Mitch Modell donating a ball boy experience at the Nets. Goose is gonna sign some stuff. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of Hall of Famers that have donated sign balls. So uh, along with this $10,000, we also, <laughs> got a Mac Pro for you to get yourself started at med school. <laughs> so I figure you need that just to get kind of going. Um, Magoose, am I forgetting bad. anything here? No, I think we're, there's quite a bit here, but uh, man, congratulations and good luck in school. Yeah. And what you're doing is just amazing for, you know, to give back. And that's what I enjoy now that my career is over and giving back and anytime I can you know, lend my name to anything like this, especially, uh, is is my pleasure. And it's great to be here this afternoon on behalf of uh, Brandon Steiner and Steiner Sports and the New York Yankees. You know something, we're gonna get behind your efforts and see if we can, you know, raise awareness and get you through medical school, which is the most important thing because we know how expensive it is. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna hug you. I'm gonna hug you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. After hooking Kobe Solano up, Goose Scotch has stuck around to enjoy the food at the fabulous NYY Steak and discuss with me his career and his immortalization at Yankee Stadium. Goose Gossage, we just hooked Kobe up with a little startup for his uh, medical education. How great was that? Oh, I, you know, you told me it was a heck of a story and uh, 
getting to know the family a little bit and this little visit that we had is is just amazing and what he's accomplished uh, you know uh, baseball was a silly game compared to what this young man has gone through and uh, and what he's accomplished and what he's going to accomplish uh, continue accomplishing uh, going to school he wants to have that that rapport that uh, you know the doctors really don't have uh, with their patients that if you've had a heart transplant and and to know what that family has gone through the mother and the father and the kid the siblings uh, it's just an amazing story, and I thanks for letting me be a part of this. It was special. I love that he took his adversity and turned it his advantage, and I just love his commitment to just helping others, which is what it's all about. I'm talking about helping others before. I have a bunch of things I want to ask you. Yeah. we got to start with his auction. We're going to yeah. be doing a whole auction on SteinerSports.com. We'll start off by you know, a Hall of Fame ball and uh, a quick photo maybe for the auction as well. So what's great about this auction is that all the proceeds are going to go to Kobe's medical education and, and help him go through med school because it's so expensive now to go to med school. So we have a whole bunch of items you'll see on SteinerSports.com and 100% of all the money is going to go to help pay for Kobe to get through med school. So go to SteinerSports.com and click and uh, you can bid on all these items we're going to have. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Hall of Famers. I was going to say a whole bunch of your friends that have signed balls for Kobe, and uh, we'll be donating uh, different items to go on the uh, auction as well. Please welcome Rich Goose Gossage. <laughs> Old Timers Day. I mean, if you're a Goose Gossage fan, I mean, what a great day for a Yankee fan to be at Yankee Stadium. What was that day like for you? You know, during my playing days here with the Yankees, I spent a lot of time in those six years down there in the bullpen and and uh, I would you know there wasn't a day that I don't think that I walked down there that I went into that bullpen admiring and looking at those monuments out there in Monument Park at the old stadium and I always looked at those those monuments and thought man what must that be like and uh, you know it's something just playing for the Yankees I, I, I said in my speech it was like an out-of-body experience um, I grew up all the way out in Colorado. My mom and dad, my whole family were huge Yankee fans. And, and uh, you know, just given the opportunity to play professional baseball, uh, when I came running in the house, my father had passed away when I was a junior in high school. And I came running in the house and I said, Mom, Mom, uh, I got a job. And I had just gotten a job uh, coaching at the park that I grew up playing my youth baseball at. And, and um and I, I ran in the house, I said, Mom, Mom, I got a job, I got a job coaching the kids. She says, well, this gentleman, Rick, has a job for you too. And I turned around and there was a scout from the Chicago White Sox. Wow. Right then and there, I'd been informed that I was, uh, you know, have an opportunity to play professional baseball. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And, and uh, all I wanted to do was put a big league uniform on one time. And I promised myself that I was gonna give it my best shot at that time, and uh, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Mickey Mantle was my favorite player, um, you know, and I didn't, I had no idea. I thought they were fictitious cartoon characters that it's really didn't, ex that didn't really exist, you know, because they were such stars. And, you know, I had never met, I'd never been out of the state of Colorado. I'd never met a big leaguer in the flesh. So, like I said, I thought these guys were some, something off the planet, you know, and, and, but I did promise myself that day that I was going to give it my best shot. All I wanted to do is put a big league uniform on that one time, and that one time turned into 22 years. And, and uh, the nine teams that I played for is amazing, uh, was amazing. Was your favorite out of those I nine? loved every team that I played for, but there's nothing like putting on the pinstripes of the New York Yankees. And uh, as I said in my speech, you know, when they presented me yes. the, the monument and a great day. And uh, I just, uh, I, I can't even comprehend it. I can't even put into words what it means to me to be in front of, first of all, an old timers day in front of all those all great old timers, my, all my peers, and, and then all the great Yankee fans. And, uh, you know, to be in that Monument Park at Yankee Stadium is something I, I will cherish the rest of my life. Richard Michael Gossage, Goose, New York Yankees, 1978 to 1983 and 1989.
one of the most intimidating pitchers ever to don pinstripes. Gossage had an explosive fastball and a fearless demeanor, frequently pitching multiple innings per appearance. In seven seasons with the Yankees, he compiled a 42 and 28 record with 151 saves and a 2.14 ERA. He was a four time All Star with the club and 1978 American League Relief Man of the Year. Inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2008. Dedicated by the New York Yankees on this day, June 22, 2014. Monument Park. I mean, you realize who's out there? Did you ever think, you know, some kid from Colorado end up being in front of an old day, old timers day crowd and having a plaque in Monument Park? What's that feeling? Well, not in my wildest dreams. I, you know, I, I thought maybe, well, you know, if I went into the Baseball Hall of Fame, you know, when I went into that, I, you know, I never even really thought about Monument Park because I know what that stands for and who's out there and uh, it's just something that is incredible to me as you know I think it's the greatest uh, honor that I've ever received other than you know my boys being born and things like that and uh, those that's the greatest thing that ever happened to me but to be put out in Monument Park is something I will cherish and and probably won't be able to comprehend for the rest of my life. What separates you? You know, Mariano talks about his laser focus, how he's able to tune everything out. Obviously, you're one of the greatest closures ever to play. What separates you? What makes you Goose Gosses, the unbelievable closer? Well, the, I think the thing that I'm most proud of, Brandon, is the workhorse mentality that we had back then. You know, it wasn't as specialized as it is today. I saw that total evolution of the bullpen you know, you didn't even want to be in the bullpen back in 72 when I broke in with the White Sox. Uh, but that was starting to evolve at that time to become more specialized. And so in, 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 in firsthand, I saw the total evolution of that bullpen from what it was back in 72, an old junk pile where old starters went that couldn't start anymore to what it has become today. You know, now, uh, you know, now it takes three guys to do what we used to do. and and, uh, and I'm not knocking the way it has progressed, but, you know, had we been used the same way as Mariano, there would be, you know, there's already one other guy that has 650 saves. And I think today the way they're using that closer is the way they should use them. I, I would like to see them uh, utilize those closers like, like Mariano in the eighth inning more often than yeah. they do. The four I think or five that, out save. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I think that they're not using him to the maximum benefit of that baseball team, uh, using him just pretty much specifically for the ninth. So, uh, but I saw that total evolution, and um, I'm very proud to be a part of that. Uh, you know, I was a workhorse. You know, I used to come in and bases uh, loaded, sixth inning. Absolutely, possibly, and uh, have to get out of that jam and then finish the seventh, eighth, and ninth, or this eighth and ninth, and and uh, so it really has changed, but. You know what really makes uh, uh, that guy special now, that closer? Closer wasn't even a coined phrase when I was, I, we were relief pitchers. Yes. Closer has started now post, you know, uh, pretty much modern day closer uh, where he closes out specifically ba basically the ninth inning. And, uh, uh, but I think that's the way they, they, they should use those guys outside of the fact that they could bring them in in the eighth inning a little more than they do. Uh, but uh, th those guys are ready for that ball game every night, and that's a huge psychological factor for the whole team to have a guy like Mariano. Now you've seen the importance of your setup guys, uh, how important they are to the success of your team. And now you don't win a championship without great setup guys to get to that closer. Yeah, two guys. Has this been a storybook career for you? Has, has this been everything you hoped for? Um, and is there, a, is there a what's next for you? Uh, you know, all I, like I said before, all I wanted to do was put a big league uniform on one time, and that one time turned into 22 years, and then an election to the Hall of Fame, the Baseball Hall of Fame, and then Monument Park, and all the great things that have happened to me. I'm, my head is still spinning. I, 
I think, you know, I could live till I'm 150 years old and it's never going to sink in. Uh, you know, I, I can't comprehend the great things that have happened to me in my career and post-career and, uh, the, you know, the, the election, like I said, to the Hall of Fame and now Monument Park is off well, the charts. Say, you know, I think it was great what we did with Kobe. It was amazing. I think your story is amazing, and you know, from you know, just I love the partnership we have too. It's just great working with you, and nice to see you know a little, little bit of a pain in the neck because now every time you sign, you got to throw the HOF in there. <laughs> but I was so grateful. I mean, it's always fun working with you. Well, thank you, Brandon and uh, Steiner Sports for for doing the great things like what you just mentioned here with Colby and yeah. giving him a little help for you know towards school and what he wants to become and help other people that, that are in his predicament, that was in the same predicament, and uh, what a great family and what a great gesture on your part. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks, Chris. My pleasure. Wow, this has just been a great show. I've had more fun and the hookups. Colby Salerno, what a story. I've never met a kid with more heart and just have so much confidence that we haven't seen the last of Colby. How about the home for the elderly? I mean, is that amazing or what? I mean, I'm hoping that's just the start of that room and as I donate more and more products, we get that room about three times the size, and I can just see 50 or 60 seniors sitting in a room, watching two or three games at one time. That's just gonna be amazing. It's been a great show. Don't forget, go to steinersports.com, click on the auction. Don't forget to bid on some really cool items for Kobe. Hey, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you the next time. All items in the Kobe Solano auction are shipped exclusively by UPS. Hey Yankee fans, enter promo code DJ2014. Just go to SteinerSports.com and you'll receive a free capsule of authentic Yankee Stadium dirt from Derek Jeter's final season. Reliable starters. An amazing farm system. Comparable closers and championship rings. This is NYY Steak, straight from the legendary stadium to the heart of Manhattan at 7 West 51st Street. Steiner Sports is the official collectibles company of the New York Yankees, Derek Jeter, and home of the exclusive Derek Jeter Collection. Shop the entire collection with items as low as $19.99 at SteinerSports.com. For a limited time, Steiner Sports is offering you a chance to take home a piece of the game. Go to SteinerSports.com and get your very own free capsule of MLB-authenticated Yankee Stadium dirt. Shipping and handling not included.